Hello, and welcome to Meet Your Alderman, a podcast that aims to inform Chicago residents about the people who represent them. If this is your first time listening, we recommend you pause here and jump back to our first episode, where we give some background on Chicago politics. We're your hosts, Eric Geber, a lifelong Chicagoan who's bracing himself for the next two months of disappointing weather. And Sarah Scott, new transplant to Chicago and still adjusting to central time. We had the chance to talk to Alderwoman Maria Haddon, who represents the 49th Ward. Geographically, her ward is on Chicago's far northeast side. It encompasses the neighborhood of Rogers Park and a little bit of West Ridge. Notable landmarks include Loyola University, Tui Park, Loyola Park, and about a half dozen beautiful beaches. We covered a lot in our conversation with Alderwoman Haddon. COVID, policing, the recent dispute between Chicago Public Schools and the Chicago Teachers Union, homelessness, the 2022 city budget, and a lot more. Two themes ran throughout the conversation. One is just how interwoven all these topics we discussed are, and interwoven in some messy, complicated ways. The uptick in COVID cases, for instance, was behind the fight between CPS and CTU. It was also creating challenges to address a growing homelessness problem. The other theme was how all the women had abused her role in city government. Elected in 2019, she is still relatively new to the scene. Along with other fresh faces, she has ideas about what it means to be an alderman that differ from some of her more senior colleagues. These ideas also influence how she thinks city council should address Chicago's most pressing issues. In the show notes for this episode, we'll include links to the 49th Ward website and other organizations that Alderwoman had and mentioned throughout the interview. There were a couple of acronyms thrown in that might be unfamiliar to some listeners. We had to look some of them up too. So we'll add an abbreviation guide. Please note that this episode was recorded back on January 6, 2022, amidst the Chicago Public Schools labor dispute and COVID debacle. We've added a few audio clips in post-interview, including this one, to color the situation for those of you who might not be familiar with some of the topics we're covering. So if our audio sounds a bit different at some points, it's all in the name of clarity. Okay, enough of that. Here's our interview with Alderwoman Maria Haddon. For our first question, we wanted to bring up that in your biography, you mentioned a few lessons that you learned from your parents. Number one is be curious and ask questions. Number two, problems that affect any of us affect all of us. And three, if you see something wrong and you're able to help, you should do what you can to make it right. How have these lessons manifested themselves in your role as older woman? They come up every day. Sometimes we're the most accessible form of kind of official government. And so people reach out to us in our offices um, for a host of things that aren't technically our jobs. I'll give you a a humorous example. We had a gentleman, older gentleman in the neighborhood. He had placed an online order through Target and he hadn't received his order yet. And he had questions about it, wanted to know what was happening. So he called our office (laughs) Um, and one of my staff members was really nice and found the 800 number, right? For Target's customer service for him and got him in touch, right? So we could figure out. And then his his order arrived to his home the following week and he called us because he needed help setting up his TV. You know, we laugh, but if people are reaching out to us, it's because they find us helpful and they find us accessible and maybe they don't know where else to go for help. And so, right, we do what we can. And then sometimes that manifests on larger scales too, where I'll say we're frequently myself, my staff, but I'll say we as an older people or other electeds, we have lots of options on whether we speak out about things or not. Hey listeners, a quick interlude. Alderwoman Haddon is about to talk about Chicago Public Schools or CPS. In early January of 2022, the Chicago Teachers Union or CTU voted to allow teachers to work remotely for a couple of weeks after the winter break. They cited a lack of COVID-19 protections as the main reason for this move. While CPS and CTU negotiated a path to opening classrooms, classes were completely canceled for most of the first week of January. By the second week, CPS resorted to blocking teachers who tried to sign in remotely to Google Classrooms, the main web platform used during remote learning. 
This was a particularly tense topic in Chicago back in January that Alder Woman had and will refer to here and later on in the episode. We're starting this morning with teachers being locked out of virtual classrooms and another big labor dispute. And I'll say the, while we're at kind of this peak of conflict right now, it's been brewing for weeks and for weeks, though it doesn't directly impact me. And in city council, we don't have direct oversight over Chicago public schools. They are a different entity. It's still something that's important to speak about because it affects it affects so many people. Um, so I'd say the you know if you if you can be helpful, um, being helpful and thinking about how as older people we use our voice or choose not to because it's a choice is something that comes up on a daily basis on issues big and small. All right, there's just a lot of really good stuff in that answer to unpack. The first thing you kind of mentioned was something that we find very interesting about. And that's the role of the aldermen in city government. And we've heard a lot about how on one side, there's like there's legislating and there's kind of working with other um, citywide entities like CPS or just city council. But another part, too, is like that very direct connection to constituents. I, I was just curious about your thoughts of like the role of the aldermen, what the priority should be for an alderman, what is, I guess, uh, the appropriate balance between that connection with constituents, the direct connection, and also the legislating piece. There's there's always a lot to unpack, I think, in Chicago politics. <laughs> and, and, and this role is, is certainly a big one. I'll start with a shorter answer. I don't know that there's a I don't know that there's an exact balance, but I'll say it is a balancing act. Historically, you might see a lot of older people focus a lot more on their ward. Really clearly, I think the one thing that we all agree upon in Chicago is that you go to your alderman for city services, right? So if this is, hey, what's happening with my trash pickup? What's happening with the infrastructure, right? The street resurfacing, or there's a problem at this bus stop. Like, I think uniformly, that would fall in everybody's expectations. So I know myself, a lot of the other uh, first-term alder people and even, you know, several of the folks I think elected over the last, um, the previous election cycle as well, are working to fill out that role of legislator a bit more because it is statutorily one of our jobs. And so finding ways to um, evolve the role, I guess, is, is one of the things I think about. Um, so don't know what the right balance is, but there are a lot of ward demands and it can be very challenging sometimes to focus on as much legislation as we might like and to work in a fairly decent size, you know, we're not Congress, but a 50 person legislative body um, for your city is a, is a pretty large body. Um, so that also means a lot of diverse opinions, which I think is good in representation for Chicago, but a lot of, you know, some high bars sometimes to get people on board, especially when we have a lot of people who are still maybe focusing a lot more on their ward and they are not as interested in the legislative piece, right? And they, you know, historically Chicago alder people are known, right, as a rubber stamp council. And that is reflective sometimes of, hey, we're going to let the legislation be done by the mayor, the mayor's administration. They're going to tell us what to do. They're going to figure out all those tough issues. We're going to hold it down in our ward and focus on city services. And, you know, that's still, I think, um, a way that uh, several of my colleagues who might be more experienced, that's the role that they were elected to, right? The expectations that were there for them and sometimes the way that they still do the job. Yeah, awesome. Uh, another question I had. So I'm, I'm a Chicago native, you know, so I've kind of grown up and heard like my dad and his tirades about Chicago politics and how messy it can be. And right now, you know, it's super cold out. So like, there are some, there, at the face of it, there could be some pretty unappealing aspects about Chicago. But I also know you're not from Chicago originally. So I'm curious, what brought you to the city? What, what kind of was appealing to it? Uh, and then also specifically, like what led you to Rogers Park and how does Rogers Park fit into, and your ward kind of fit into the Chicago narrative, so to speak? I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, so born and raised and both sides of my family have lived in, in Columbus or Central Ohio for, for a few generations. 
I came here to try living in a different city. So after undergraduate school at Ohio State, undergraduate went really quickly and it was ending before I knew it. And I also wanted some practical work experience. I've been working since I was 14. So I'd had lots of, you know, jobs, but I wanted something that was maybe more work experience toward my career. So I actually um, volunteered with AmeriCorps. So I got a position with the AmeriCorps VISTA program in Waukegan. Um, so worked with the Youth Conservation Corps there, really fantastic nonprofit. And uh, I ended up in Rogers Park because literally in 2004, before maps were on our phones, right? We just like went to MapQuest. Um, I actually kept maps in my car, um, like a road atlas. And my best friend and I, we're like, hey, let's go find an apartment in Chicago. We took a Saturday. I put my dog in the car and I looked at a map and it was like, what's the first major exit in Chicago coming from the north? And I chose Devon Avenue, which I still then thought of as Devon. We got off 94 at Devon and I'm like, I'll just drive east and then we'll hit Chicago and then we'll just, just drive around until we find some neighborhoods that we like and we'll kind of get a feel. But if you guys are either native Chicagoans or transplant Northsiders, you'll know that Devon Avenue on a Saturday is really slow. So it was, it took us like half a day. <laughs> it felt like just to make it into the city. And so the first neighborhood we ended up in was Rogers Park. And so it was a very short apartment search. Found a place and, and you know, that was my first year living in Chicago proper. But I stayed in Rogers Park because it was such a welcoming place, especially not being from Chicago. Being a, a Black person and moving here and having an experience where you know, being a minority, but not necessarily feeling like a minority um, was what Rogers Park gave, right? So there's so many people from different places, um, so many racial and ethnic backgrounds, cultural differences, you know, uh, LGBTQ representation, um, languages spoken, just everything, religious affiliations. And so being here immediately felt like home. It just felt like a very comfortable and open and welcoming place. Um, in my opinion, it's um, a, a real sweet spot in Chicago. I mean, it seems like Chicago is really fortunate that AmeriCorps gave you the position in Illinois. And then, you know, obviously this is a, a completely different track. You could have been older person in Denver. There you go, right? <laughs> Turning to our topic, 2022 budget and American Recovery Plan funds, one thing, and I know initially we were planning on having this interview on December 1st, as you probably remember, a very intense time for city council. Um, one of the hot <laughs> debates right now is obviously the redrawing of the ward map. Mm -hmm. We would love just a little bit of an insider look into what happened on December 1st when city council was supposed to vote for the ward map and what constituents might be able to expect in the upcoming months. For listeners who don't know, after the census occurs every 10 years, the city council here in Chicago convenes to redraw the boundaries of each ward based on population changes. Sure. I maintain my optimistic disposition by just blocking out everything that was traumatic from like more than more than two weeks ago. So December 1st. I think that was like, that was like <laughs> 10 years ago, basically. It was a whirlwind of a week, um, if you all remember. So I'd say really that Monday was, I think, when the roller coaster kind of peaked. I, at least, and I think many of my colleagues were fully expecting to see a map in the Rules Committee meeting presented. I think I tweeted about it, really excited. Hey, we're going to have like this, this committee meeting. We're going to see the first view of this map. And then we didn't. And then Tuesday came and we still didn't. And there was a lot, a lot of meetings, a lot of conversations with colleagues and caucus groups. We eventually did introduce a map, but we now have three maps that are before council and neither of them has enough support to wholly pass on its own. So from a 49th Ward perspective, you know, I think we've done what we needed to do 
in kind of the official, like what should the map look like and in representing um, our constituents. 